All right, let's get some analysis then. We are joined by advocate uh, Sipo Manjula, pan-Africanist, human rights activist and researcher at the Tawambeki African School of Public and International Affairs uh, at uh, UNISA. Advocate, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so very much uh, for joining us here on uh, SABC News. Uh, all right, we hear that there is this uh, condemnation, of course, uh, from uh, neighbors of uh, Niger of the attempted coup. Let's talk about uh, where we are and where we stand um, on this attempted uh, coup and, and, and your reading of, of you know, what's, what's currently uh, happening in Niger. Uh, good evening, my dear sister, and even to the viewers. Uh, if you, if one was reading and listening to the inset, uh, I think it is always important to understand the science of a coup and also the attempted coup. But also to remember that Niger has a history of military coups since 1960 to the 70s to also in 2010. But when one looks, it is the issue again that will remind us of what happened in Guinea Conakry when Alpha Conde was removed. Also, what has happened in Mali, mm. Burkina Faso, just recently between 2020 and 2021. But the issue also is of the presidential guard. Is the issues around the living conditions of the presidential guard that has led to this fallout? Yeah. But also, Bazoom, if, if one looks, at the at the reading again flow is the issue that of foreign powers what i called the interest of usa interest of france and also for him also opting not to attend the russia africa summit mm. so if if one looks at all these scenarios that are coming up also it is that niger is a poor country but it also have uranium it also have a natural resource that has become an appetizer to yeah. the foreign powers so if one read the current situation there are dynamics of economic resources there are issues around military uh, discipline that has to be dealt with but also i think what one is reading also is the proactiveness of ECOWAS under ebola dinuba uh, ahmed at the jagaban by sending the president of benin to go and do the fact finding because the twitter streets that are coming from ECOWAS. I mean, from uh, AU doesn't mean nothing. Yeah, I you know, we we we're hearing. Uh, yeah, you know, yes. we're hearing that there's a concern about, and I, and I raise this with you because you know you're a human rights uh, activist. There are concerns that uh, you know this coup could cause, uh, of course, human rights uh, in, infringements as it uh, continues. But you know, when you read about, uh, you know, when you hear why, um, you know, they decided to go this route, you'll hear that people of Niger are, you know, tired of inflation, they're tired of the, you know, how they live, and you know, their human rights are being violated uh, at the same time. If you look at it in in, in in that way i mean how is, is that a correct uh, justification or assessment of the situation that yes you know there may be human rights um, violations due to the fact that there is a coup d'etat but what we are fighting for is essentially the fact that our human rights um are being uh, you know trampled on in the first place no correctly remember that flow even for his uh, <clears throat> coming into power in 2021 he was a successor to the a president who has been there for almost a decade also, there were challenges, there were concerns coming from the previous um, officials, the military generals. Uh, there was a concern from the citizens about the state of uh, e economy in that country. So as you said, for us to balance the human rights values or human rights violations that have occurred, we also, like I've said earlier, we see the presence of the French troops, the presence of yeah. the American embassy that has also cost the citizens and the presidential guard because you will understand that lately people have been angry about the French presence in the Sahel region. Yeah, yeah. And there is a, a who was Russia. There is this uh, appetite towards Russia, and that's where you will find that the issues of human rights violation might not stand for now. Is the issue of him uh, fighting for his presidency? And also dealing with how to deal with this attempted coup that has happened this afternoon. But also it goes back to the values of ECOWAS and the values of AU. How do we deal with such issues that are also, like I said, the role of multinationals, the role of foreign powers, the presence of the military 
peacekeepers mm. of the foreign countries in African soil. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you, you mention you mention this, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, uh, France being involved, the USA being involved. Um, you know, you, uh, some might say that Niger has been a pivotal a pivotal ally um, for Western powers, but some might even say a, a proxy or a lackey of 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 the Western powers. Um, and of course, they've faced uh, growing acrimony from uh, you know uh, the new juntas in Mali and Burkina Faso. Is this instability um, a sort of way to push for to agitate for for war? Um, essentially, I mean, you're talking about the fact that there are <clears throat> huge economic resources in the country, and we know. Uh, what happens in a country where there are, uh, you know, significant, um, you know, there's significant uh, wealth within the, the, the country itself? No, 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 correct. But let's look at the case scenarios of Mali and Burkina Faso. We didn't see any escalation of war or a conflict, but what we, we saw was only the uh, the issues around sanctions being pursued by ECOWAS and the UN Security Council and the AU. But what we see here is that it will not be an escalation of conflict. Hence, we have the mediation efforts. And hence, I said earlier, the role of ECOWAS by sending the president of Benin, Patrice Talon, to go and mediate. It is a very good move mm. for them to be able to understand what are the issues, what are the push and the pull factors. Yeah. But also, safe to say that, yes, some of these military coups or attempted coups have a tendency to spill into a sense of the neighboring countries like you have mentioned the countries like algeria is worried already yeah. uh, countries like uh, abuja it is worried already about this niger attempted coup but like i've said this has been a script and a ritual in niger of military coups since 1960 yeah. and it has been coming from this issue of civilian and military rule how do we balance that and the issue of understanding the cost of a conflict. Why have we had to undergo conflict when the African Union and ECOWAS have been talking about silencing of guns in the African continent? It is a decade that we have to pursue that philosophical view of silencing the guns in the African continent. But also, I still insist, Flo, that the, the role of the French and the role of the U.S. having mm. a military base there. It is all about nefarious purpose, as they are saying, they are fighting the jihadists. But we know that they are there to suck the uranium yeah. that is in yeah. Niger. Yeah. And just lastly, and very quickly, I mean, you know, you mentioned Russia, and I just, I, I don't want to leave that. Um, you know, there's this, this concern from, from the West uh, that the coup uh, would create an opportunity, uh, you know, for Russia and other actors to spread influence in Niger. Is that a, a legitimate concern? But also, how do you feel about the fact that you know, African countries are seen as, as children, you know, whose, whose minds must be swayed and altered uh, when it comes to who must be enemies of, of who. I mean, why can't African countries have their own stance when it comes uh, uh, to Russia? What's, you know, what's your view on that? I know we're running out of time, but, you know, just a quick, a quick one on that. No, 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 correct. Remember African leaders, as we speak now, they have landed in St. Uh, Petersburg for Russia-Africa summit yeah. after 2019, a very important meeting of minds. And one will assume that Russia will be clear to allow African countries to be independent, to have their own collective views about trade, development, democracy. I don't think that this move of us being seen as being aligned to russia it is correct you have usa africa summit you have france africa summit but why when it comes to russia and africa summit there's always concern that they will send a paramilitary group the wagner group to to go in i think it's highly important for ECOWAS and au to arrest this situation before it can come out of hand and it it, it sits with the european powers and also the un that has failed many african countries that have undergone military coups yeah so in short i don't think africans yeah. have to allow to be hoodwinked by this uh, uh what i call the misinformation and the disinformation that come from the western media and its analysts all right uh, advocate it's always a pleasure to have you uh, on the show we certainly as always appreciate you giving us your time here uh, on sabc news uh, that is advocate sipo mandula pan-africanist human rights uh, lawyer and activist and researcher at the tawambeki african school School of Public and International Affairs uh, at UNISA.